three, and then we will have our period of meditation and come back and share with you what thus says the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles or the scripture devices these days, I ask that you join with me in the book of Jeremiah, Old Testament setting, Jeremiah chapter 33. Only three verses this morning, first three verses. So if you have found Jeremiah 33, if you're physically able to stand, I ask that you will please stand with me as we read the word of God. Amen. Jeremiah 33, verse one. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah a second time. Well while he was still shut up in the court of the prison, saying, thus says the Lord who made it, the Lord who formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Mm -hmm. Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Thus ending the reading of God's word, may it Rich our hearts this morning as you take your seat. Just want you to think on this thought with me this morning. What to do when well, you don't know what to do? All right. Sure, say that. That drinking, and I'm talking about right there, <laughs> right there little Lord, right. and Holy Ghost yeah. power. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Come to this portion of our service to share with you the bread of life, well, bread, bread of truth mm -hmm. to your spirit, man here and woman and this morning. Amen. 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 Eternal yeah. God, our Father, we come, we thank you for this day, we thank you for your goodness and mercy and your grace, your loving kindness. All that you have done and all that you're doing, we thank you for yet again, I'll be able to stand and to write the divided word of truth of God that preached from this holy writ, the scriptures. As always, oh God, ask that you give us preaching and teaching power that you be reverence. Your son, Jesus Christ, be received in every sinful man, woman, boy, and girl have an opportunity to repentance. Because in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So we come this morning and I pose this question to you and it, it may not be so much for you as it is for me but what do you do you don't know what to do all right yeah. have 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 you ever been in such yeah. a place yeah. in your life oh yeah when you didn't know what to do and and if you have had the luxury of knowing what to do all the time then as my mama used to say in these math, keep living. <laughs> Have you ever asked yourself or said to yourself, I, I do, and when I say these things to myself, I say Cain. For some reason, I, I call my own list. I say, Cain, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Have you ever reached a place where you come to the end of your rope? Daddy told me a long time ago, he said, boy, when you come to your end of your rope, tie a knot in it and hang on. <laughs> Ever felt like you, you're just in the dark? Ever felt confused as to what to do? Have you ever reached a fork in the road and didn't know which way to go? Somebody else told me that came when you reached a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> Situation has come up in your life, any event has come up in your life, circumstances, and certainly you don't know what to do. So what do you do when you don't know what to do? <laughs> Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 tells us all we need to know. For there it reads, he says, call to me. That's right. Call to me, call unto me, and he says, and I will answer you. 
Amen. Amen. And not only that, but and show you great and mighty things which you don't know. You see what the Bible, see what Jeremiah said? Uh, things which what? You don't know. That means you don't know what to do. Amen. In other words, he said, thou knowest not what to do. You're at a loss. What to do? I'm, I'm drawing the blank. So what does this verse tell us to do when we don't know what to do? What, what, does, what does God say? Well, says again, call, call, say call. call. Unto me. He says, he says, and I will answer you. And I'll show you. So what do you do again when you don't know what to do? You call. You pray. You call. You pray. Mm -hmm. Give you three things that I'm done for this morning out of this text. And what I see here is there's a plea. There's call unto me. God says, God, the God of the universe, watch this, is inviting you and I to talk to him. He says, call to me. Now, now I don't know about you, but we call to and call on a lot of people. Huh? Nowadays, you, you just text them. I'm, 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 look, 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 be honest, confession this morning. I'm text out, I'm, I'm emailed out, I'm zoomed out. <laughs> we call on everybody, we call on all lots of people. But when is the last time you called God? Got my cell phone up here, and it's up here for a reason to talk to my executive producer on the Zoom thing. So, we, like she said, you couldn't hear, can't see, whatever it is. That's my communication. But in this thing, I have phone numbers. And I know looking out there, many of y'all have me in your phone director. I don't even ask. Who have my phone number anymore? You know what my question is? Who don't have it? <laughs> well, let me help you this morning. That ought to be a number that you have in your spiritual phone directory this morning. And that's Jeremiah 33 and 3. That's God's phone number. You got his? You got his in your phone? You got God's phone number in there? You got everybody else, Sally, Hootie, Booty, Scooting, Hootie, and them. You better go in there this morning and make a new entry. It's in there. It's the one with the plus side on it. Click on it. When do you call? Who do you call when you need some advice? Who you don't know what to do? God says, call me. That's, that's what I see out of this text. And asking, he says, call unto me. What a proposition. Lord. That you and I, think about it, think about it. We didn't have to think of prayer. We didn't make prayer. None of us are here. Got together in any kind of session. And said, let's have this thing called prayer. We didn't think of that. God did. So God is the source of prayer. Not only is he the source of prayer, but he's the substance of prayer. He's the summation of prayer. Look how simple the text is. You still have Jeremiah 33 and 3. It's simply say, call. Simplicity. This can be done even without the mind. Done with the mind, without uttering one word. You don't have to utter one word and have prayer. Well, 
the sensibility that the that Jeremiah is saying today. He says, call unto me. The God of the universe, again, invites us to speak to him. Watch this. At any time. There has been some call made to Pastor Cain that I didn't get to later. Huh? You look up and, and say, oh my God, I didn't miss such and such call. Man. You don't have to worry about that with God. God don't miss phone calls. He don't, he don't miss calls. You can call him anytime. But they try to read the pastor. They say, what's a good time for you, pastor? I said, well, between. <laughs> between the hours of. That works for me. That works for me. That works. Aren't you glad? That the God that we serve, the God that we worship, the God that we preach about, the God that we sing about, don't have office hours? You mean to tell me that, that the phone call I receive on Tuesday evening, I got to wait till Wednesday? Roman Paul pins in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. He said, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have, watch the here, here access. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that access comes by faith into what? Into the eternal riches and grace of God, whereby we stand. We have access. Some of us is not accessing. Thank God for. It's audacity. He said, not only call and call upon me, call upon me. Yeah, the audacity. God said, you are invited. Not just invited, you invited to the top. Huh? You're invited to the top. You got a problem, come straight to the top. We don't do that here. Now we'll do that up in McDonald's. They'd have messed up my order. Where's the manager? Where's the supervisor? I want to speak to the supervisor. You take mess like that to the top. You better learn how to take some of them issues that are going on in your life to the very top, to the king of kings and the lord of lords. Look, you can't ask too much of God. Nor can you ask too often. The situation and the relationship that I have with God right now is one of these things. When he, when I call him, he said, you again? <laughs> I'd rather have, oh, help me Holy Ghost this morning. Thank you, Luke. I'd rather have you again than you who? <laughs> <laughs> who are you? Bible says, the psalmist says, God says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall praise me. You having troubles this morning and don't know what to do, God says, simply call on him. And he says, he'll deliver you. He's talking to the saints this morning. Do you know how close God is to you? He's as close to you as the words in your mouth. God hears. Jeremiah 
chapter 29, verse 12, God says, then shall ye call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hear you. God isn't deaf. Call on him, he will hear you. In other words, God simply saying to us this morning, talk to me. Talk to me. When you don't know what to do, God said, ask me. Now, he ain't going to force you. He won't force you to do anything, but I already told you have access. Use Use your assets. Use your past. My second point this morning is simply that's a promise. He says, I will answer thee. Not only does God hear us when we pray, but he answers us. Huh? He answers us. Somebody said, when we don't pray, we get what we do. When we don't pray, we get what we can do. Huh? But baby, when you pray, you get what God can do. I usually, uh, um, you know, people, you know, when they when they got special recipes, things like that, they, they don't give away the secrets. They don't give away their secrets. But I'm gonna give you a secret this morning. Got your pen ready? It's still in my heart, but give them a, a secret to answer prayer. Y'all ready? Ready. Three ingredients. First one is pray. Pray. I'll give the second one. Second one is pray. Oh, here's, here's the kicker. Y'all ready for the kicker? The third one is pray. Come on. I'll see you. Hope y'all wrote that down. Get the tape. It's on Zoom. We, we, we put them out there. So there's only one prayer that God cannot and will not answer. And that is the prayer that is not praying. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> Simplest term, he's, he says, you, 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 what is it? You, you, uh, you, you have not. Uh, yes, yes, not. <laughs> See, you know. Yeah. You know, they already know. I ain't telling you nothing new. Luke 11, 9, 10, Jesus said, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. For everyone who asks receives. And he that seeks finds. And to him that knocketh shall be opened. Amen. Amen. Let me share with you how, how God answers prayer. Sometimes God answers directly. Hmm? Directly. Sometimes God answer may be delayed. <laughs> delayed. All I'm saying to you when it's delayed, God, God is not so much concerned about the time. as he is about the timing. At the right time, God will answer, but not until then. Glory be God. Sometimes God answer may be different. Mm. You may ask for one thing and he give you something better. Lord, Lord, Lord. I, I, could, I could probably I could probably go.
go left on that one, but I'm going to stay in the middle. Stay on the straight and narrow, but I could probably go, go somewhere else with that. Amen. Amen. God is simply, know that God is wiser than we are. Right. And he knows what we need better than we do. Amen. Let your requests be made known. You know what the Bible says? Paul says that unto God. But always end your prayer with, not my will, but thy will. And here's the key. If it's not my will, thy will be done. But if my will is in his will, that's, that's biblical. Sometimes God answer may be denied. God may say no. God may say no. There may be times when God would deny your request. Here he says in his answer, and I will answer thee right in the text. Mm -hmm. This is positive, amen? Lord. He says, I will. Mm -hmm. There is promise, answer. Right. It's personal, D. I will answer, not your neighbor, mm -hmm. All right. he will. <laughs> but I'm going to answer you. You ask, you pray to, I'm going to ask, answer you, amen? Here's what I always say when it comes to prayer. Look at me, everybody. Even on Zoom, look at me. When you pray, pray specifically. Amen. Amen. My wife's thinking I'm going to hit a heart attack up here or something. She asked me if I was okay. <laughs> pray specifically. Ask not just for a job. But for the one you want. Don't you don't have to be all roundabout, wishy-washy, all gray, asking God for something that you know you desire. Because here's what happens. And I've been I've been down that road. Well, I prayed and it wasn't specific. Pray, let's just say for a job. Job. That's how I left the job, employment. And I get a phone call for a job, employment. You know what I turned around and did? Ask the Lord, is that the one? I'm just telling you where, where, where I've been. And the Lord says, that's the only one I see. <laughs> I don't want to get a big job. He didn't say that. I'm just trying to help you. But if you ask for the accounting job, if you ask for the nursing job, if you ask for a specific career, then when it comes, instead of going back and ask God if that's what he wants you to have, where to go, you can shout hallelujah right where you are. God asks his prayer. Why? Because he's listening. Not only that, but he's interested in you. And he's able. And not only that, he's willing. Someone pinned. Prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance. But laying hold on his willingness. Amen? Amen? Amen. Notice that the word of God is very plain, very clear when it comes to prayer. Well, there's, 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 and you ought to be glad, there's no long list of instructions on how to pray. Well, does not say you have to rub any beads. <laughs> You, 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 you don't have to recite hell to anybody. Come on, somebody. No, no, the word of God that you have right in front of you simply says, call upon God. It does not even say, 
come bring your prayer through a saint. Does not say you have to be in a cubicle in a box. You don't have to come through Mary, Margot or Jane. You don't have to come through a priest. It says clearly, call upon God. Direct your eyes of faith to God. And he says, and I will hear you and I will answer you. Third point, I'm done. That there is an assurance that God will answer prayer. God will answer prayer. Huh? Moses, Bible students out there, tell me that when his arms were weary, but when it was held high, that the army defeated the Amalekites. Yes. Hannah mm -hmm. <coughs> gave her son Samuel, Elijah, mm -hmm. with fire from heaven. God will answer prayer. Amen. So how do we address, how do I deal with this mystery of unanswered prayer? Unanswered prayer. If the request is wrong, God says no. You do know no is an answer, don't you? Amen. Ah. That's right. That's right. You do realize no is an answer. If the timing is wrong, God says slow, slow your road. He said wait. Wait is an answer also. God's delay is not God's denial. Amen? Amen. But God's timing is always perfect. Wait on the Lord. Right. Some of us got to learn how to what? Wait. That's, that's, that's a learned lesson. It's learned. You got to wait sometimes. You just Got to wait. You, you all, everybody in here, everybody in here familiar with waiting. So you won't wait on the Lord, but you wait on your doctor, won't you? Huh? Maybe that's sometimes that's what God needs to have. We need to have a spiritual waiting room. I know it'd be Pat. But when you answer your prayer, when you answer your prayer, when you ask your prayer, the Holy Ghost said, thank you for coming. Take a seat. If you are wrong, God says grow. The, the answer can be different, amen? A lot of things we have to grow in. What do you do? When you don't know what to do, you pray. Then he says, and great things, great things, mighty, great and mighty things which you do not know. Amen. Great things mean me to me and me, big things, abundant things, many things, precious things, vast things, things which knows no bound. Amen. And God promises to do in your life great things and mighty things that he's going to prepare, amen? amen. What a promise we have from the Lord right, right from the text. You ought, to, you ought to highlight this passage this morning. Now watch this. If, if you are not born again, if you're not a child of God, if you do not have a personal relationship, with God through Jesus Christ, Amen. then God's only promise to answer one prayer from your heart Amen. and lips. And that's the prayer of faith of salvation. Amen. Amen. Now that's that mean he, he
he can or won't answer other prayers? Absolutely not. I know God came and stood up in my life Amen. before I got saved. Lord. I know that. Amen. I know that now. I know that now on the backside of things, I know there's nobody but God that got me out just in time. Amen. I know it was God that got me home from a ride. Amen. I don't know if I should say, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how long the uh, how long the laws is in Virginia before it no longer applies. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm on Zoom too. Let me let me move on. That's some, that's some things. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's some things. That I did in my life before I got saved. Amen. That the God who saved me came by and made sure that I'll be standing here today. <laughs> Unshackled, unbound. Not trying to sponge in the day. <laughs> Tell me what God won't do for you. Amen. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is too hard for God. He will do great and mighty things in your life. Let me stop. Let me stop. There may be somebody here today who don't know Jesus. It might be here in the sanctuary. It could be on Zoom. You don't know him. And say no of him. Say no him. Personal relationship. And we want to extend this relationship. We want to extend this this meeting, this greet with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into your life. Oh, it's not through these brothers or myself or these preachers here, but it's through the Holy Ghost that you come to know Jesus Christ. But let me say this to you that in order to do that God's way, wherever you might be in the sound of my voice, if you know that you're unsaved, you're not sealed until the day of redemption, all you have to say is, Lord, I'm a sinner. I said you will forgive me of my sins. Then I ask, oh God, that you will come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. That, that latter part is predicated on what the word of God said. Now Paul teaches that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in our heart that God has raised him or her from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you believe that here today, if you've uttered it in your mouth, believe it in your heart, then we celebrate this newness of Christ Jesus with you here today, wherever you might be. Let us stand, let us stand, wherever you might be. If you're here, not only just for new converts, but there may be somebody here who wants to join this fellowship, this ministry. You already saved. Whatever the reason where you are today, you looking for a church home, a place to worship. We invite you, we encourage you to come as well, if there's such a one in our midst. Another. Another. There may be one even on Zoom today. Let's say, come to Jesus. Come on, is that one? Is that another?
all that he's doing. Amen. Thank God for you, each and every one of you, for being here. Those on Zoom, God bless you out there. Thank God for you here in the sanctuary. Continue to join us each and every Sunday morning. Amen. Get back to doing the things that we're accustomed to doing. April Washington, see me before you leave. So again, I thank you and I thank God for your prayers. Amen. Lord, we keep you. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for another experience, another expression of your love, your goodness, and your mercy. We thank you, God, for yet again our being able to come into the sanctuary, or at least our being able to assemble ourselves, even on Zoom. And in our coming, oh God, we came to sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs, and we did that. But most importantly, we came to hear from the Holy Writ, all the scripture. And therefore, we conclude that because we have set under the anointing of the word of God, that we are much more bold and emboldened in such a way that as we go our way today, starting right here, right now, that we go forward to tell somebody, anybody, everybody that Jesus Christ saved. Now to him we have forgive us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. The only wise God our Father be the glory and the majesty, dominion and power, henceforth now and forevermore. Let the church say, say. Come on, let the church say, man. Let the church say. God has spoken. Let the church. Come on, one more time. Say. One more time. 